Right, so my name is Marco Pavone, and I'm in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and I run the uh, Autonomous System Laboratory. And what I'm going to talk about is robotics as applied to space applications. We've seen a number of applications to aerial vehicle, underwater vehicle, ground robots. But I would say that uh, rob uh, robotics is going to play an increasingly major role also in the space sectors. Examples include, for example, autonomous spacecraft performing autonomous refueling in orbit, assembly of large space structures, next generation space exploration missions, whereby, for example, uh, you want to capture an asteroid and bring it back in orbit around the moon, or move around weird bodies like asteroids and comets. This is something I've been working on extensively when I was an employee at another jet propulsion laboratory or tight formation flying missions for the next generation of the space science, for example, gravitational science. What I've been working on for the past uh, two, three years with my research group is a technology for the online planning of uh, trajectories for spacecraft, and the interplay with the uh, higher level decision-making module and uh, sensing. So I know most of you are already familiar with the motion planning problem, but just to make sure that we are all on the same page, Essentially, the motion planning problem entails solving a problem of going from a starting point to a goal region in a way that uh, we avoid obstacles, we satisfy the dynamical constraints of our vehicle, and we possibly optimize uh, a certain uh, cost function, which is given by, that, is, that has an additive structure. Spacecraft add uh, significant complexity to this problem. First, because of the high dimensional space, with spacecraft you have uh, three translational decrease of freedom, three rotational decrease, uh, decrease of freedom. Second, because you really have to take into account uh, dynamical constraints, for example, the amount of momentum that you accumulate. And three, because you have very tight computational constraints. To give you a non-scientific example of what can go wrong in space, this is an example from the movie Armageddon, where you have uh, two spacecraft that here are not showing, but yeah, they're trying to, Avoid the asteroids, they're trying to land on the asteroid, avoiding the debris fields, they have an obstacle avoidance system engaged, but it fails. So Hollywood was not using our uh, algorithms. Hopefully next Armageddon 2 will use them. So for problems that are high dimensional, a fairly popular approach is the so-called sampling-based approach, where the idea is to avoid the explicit characterization of obstacles in the state space, and instead rely on a probing mechanism to sample your state space. The specific characterization of obstacles is one of the bottlenecks for motion planning. To put my work in perspective, I want to uh, give you a brief overview of the state of the art in sampling-based method uh, for motion planning. On the one end of the spectrum, there is the so-called PRM algorithm, probabilistic roadmap algorithm. The idea is that you have a certain obstacle region, a certain goal region, you throw endpoints in your state space, and then you start connecting the points according to a disconnectivity model. So whereby for each point, you try to connect all neighboring points within a certain radius, where the radius is chosen in such a way to balance uh, computational complexity with the connectivity of your grid. And then uh, you keep going for all uh, points until you get a roadmap. And once you have a roadmap, you use a shortest path algorithm to get to the goal. So the key point here is that uh, if you have n points, you can show that uh, each point is going to have log n neighbors. So for each point, you are going to compute log n collision checks. A collision checks is one of the bottlenecks for motion planning. On the other end of the spectrum are RRT-like algorithms, rapidly exploring random trees, where the idea is instead to greedily uh, explore the state space. So let's assume that we are given already a trio of paths, then we sample a new point, we attach the new point to the closest vertex in our trio of paths, and we keep going. So this is very fast. As you can see here, we are only performing one collision check per point, but we are greedily exploring the state space. So uh, for example, you want to consider some rewiring in order to locally fix this greediness. Bottom line here is that uh, on this part, we have uh, for n points a very high quality solution, but slow. And here for n points, you have one collision check per point. So this is very fast. But usually given a certain number of points, you have a poor quality for your solution. So our idea was to combine the methodical way by which a PRM-like algorithm explored the state space with uh, the aggressive way that RRT-like uh, algorithm explored the state space. In particular, the idea is to run dynamic programming on the samples 
and accordingly build uh, a tree of paths that grows steadily upward in cost to come space. What we do in particular, what is the central idea be, uh, behind this algorithm, is to run a lazy version of a dynamic programming operator, which works as follows. Let's assume that uh, we are given a tree of paths similar to the RRT case, and then we have a new point that we want to add to the tree of paths. So what we do is to compute um, a dynamic programming equation, whereby C of V will be the cost to arrive to node V. And then you try to connect V to the best possible neighbor, where best is with respect to this additive cost function, where cost is the immediate gain that you get by connecting to a certain point, for example, it's just the length of the edge, for the case of U2, plus the cost to arrive to U2 in this case. The catch here is that we are assuming, pretending that there are no obstacles. So to evaluate this equation, we don't have to perform any collision check. And then we rank all nodes according to this cost function. And for the node that we select for addition, for example, U2 in this case, we perform one collision check. If that edge is collision free, we add it to the tree. If not, we just forget about it. So here you can see how essentially what we do is to grow a three of us. Now, what we do is to implement a suboptimal, if you will, a sloppy version of a dynamic programming. And as Steve Boyd said before, uh, the dirty trick of control people is to implement uh, uh, math in a controlled, sloppy way. That's what we're doing, because what you can show is that in the number of times that we make a mistake is very small, indeed vanishingly rare as the number of points goes to infinity. But we are connecting things almost optimally. What I'm saying is that uh, for a certain number of points, we get a solution whose cost is very similar to the cost of a solution that will be delivered by a PRM-like uh, algorithm, but we only perform one collision check per point. So we do it as fast as um, an RRT uh, type of algorithm. So we have performed a fairly thorough benchmark of our algorithm on uh, uh, different examples. I refer, I refer you if you're interested to our paper. What I want to show you is our testbed, where essentially we are emulating the dynamics of a spacecraft on a free-floating, uh, very flat table. We're performing different grasping maneuvers. So here, the spacecraft is trying to dock with another spacecraft over here. Here you can show that with a stick we are trying to perturb the spacecraft quite severely. It's almost going to collide, but somehow with very, with very coarse and limited control authority, we're able to recover. And we can also do fairly advanced maneuvers, for example, pointing with very coarse actuation. Um, we have extended this idea to the problem of kinodynamic planning, in which we want also to take into consideration the dynamical constraints, for example, bounded curvature or uh, momentum. Uh, the extension relies on some fairly delicate algorithms uh, from uh, differential geometry and uh, dynamical systems. Turns out that we are able to compute uh, pretty good paths uh, with a sub-second computation time. So if you are familiar with the uh, um, field of kinodynamic planning, this is uh, pretty fast. And we have a strong optimality guarantees. Something that I would like to point out is that among our theoretical results, we were able to obtain a convergence rate bound. And um, our convergence, convergence rate bounds is really as follows. So we converge to an optimal solution at a speed equal to n to the power one over d, where d is the number of dimensions. As you expect, and as you increase the number of dimensions, our algorithm converges more slowly. So this gives you an idea about uh, how to design algorithms in a way that you improve your convergence rate. And I will wrap up this talk by showing some other related work with uh, robotic spacecraft. So we try to combine our algorithms with mechanical design. So here we are uh, developing a spacecraft that moves in the low gravity field of asteroids by internal actuation, by spinning internal wheels. And um, this project is gaining quite a uh, little bit of traction in, uh, within NASA. And we are developing here at Stanford a microgravity testbed to test mobility system in a very low gravity condition, 10 to the minus 3 meter per square second. And here you, you see how something will move on Phobos, which is a satellite of Mars. And with this, I conclude my talk.